I'm going to be in a series on love, amen. We're going to talk about real love, amen, real love, because it's February and we have Valentine's Day. We know it's black history and we did some things of that nature, but we want to make sure that we deal with what we really need to deal with, and that is love, amen. John, we're going to be in John chapter 21, John chapter 21, amen, John chapter 21. John chapter 21, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17, and it reads, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Lord, ask for your power, your grace to reside upon your servant. Bring a word for 11 o'clock, not the one you brought at 8 o'clock. Lord, bring a right now word, a word that will pierce our hearts, a word that will convict us, not condemn us, a word that will cut us, yet sew us back together again like a a precise surgeon, Lord. Use us, Lord, and cause me to rightly divide the word of truth. Ask for you to use me, decrease me, but use my intellect, my reasoning, my mind, my mouth. Use them as instruments for your glory to bring a message, Lord, from on high. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As you take your seat, as you take your seat, I want to speak to you from the subject of how deep is your love? I ain't going to whine like Keith Sweat, but how deep (laughs) is your love? Amen. This is a critical passage for the church and its ministers. It has one great lesson. Love is the one basic essential for ministry. Without love, ministry counts for nothing in God's eyes. The passage concerns three questions asked by our Lord to Peter after the meal. One, in verse 15, do you love me more than thee? In verse 16, he says, do you love me with God's love? And in verse 17, do you love me as a loyal brother? This passage is best studied as a whole comparing each question with the other two questions. Because of this, all three points are studied together and by separate and not separated by points. See, see. See, the the meal was finished. Jesus had the disciples, and the disciples were sitting around talking and sharing together after the meal. Jesus had already met Peter all alone in private uh, to discuss Peter's denial and to make sure he was fully restored. See, this is what I like about Jesus. Jesus will talk to you privately first. That's why you need your private talk. See, we in this Twitter age and this Instagram age, we, we don't understand about how you got to let your life marinate sometimes and how you got to put the seasoning on the steak and let it sit overnight. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, y'all don't know about the crock pot. You just want everything to be microwaved. And we live in an instantaneous society where we take pictures and everything is developed. But back in the day, my old school people know when you took pictures, you had to take the film paper to the dark room and put it in a dark room and let it develop and if the light hit it too quick it would expose too quick and it would mess it up and you got to understand some of you all want to be on this stage some of y'all want to be promoted to CEO but God is trying to develop you because he loves you so much he won't let fruit grow on your vine before it's time you are like a tree planted beside rivers of living water that would yield fruit in its season God does not want to bless you before your time because if he does it'll mess you up because you get exposed too quick Oh, don't try to run to the light too quick. Let God keep you in the dark room and develop you. Peter's leadership needed to be reinforced publicly among all the disciples. They all knew about Peter's denial. Jesus had to make sure Peter would never deny him nor fall back from his mission again. Jesus needed to teach the disciples the one basic essential for ministry. None of them, not even the charismatic leader such as Peter, could ever minister and bear godly fruit unless he loved the flock of God. A man may be the most gifted person in the world, but he is nothing and can do nothing of value in God's eyes unless he first loves abilities, talents, gifts, commitments, good deeds 
deeds and works uh, just don't qualify a man before God nor make a man acceptable to God. The one great thing, in fact, the only thing that makes a man acceptable and that qualifies him to serve God is love. Uh, Corinthians 13 tells us this way. I don't care if you can prophesy with the tongue of angels. I don't care if you can put yourself in harm's way to save somebody. If you're not doing it out of love, it means nothing. I don't care how good you preach. I don't care how much you can bring and divide the right the word of truth. If you don't do it in love, nobody going to hear you because it's like a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. You know why the devil plant people in church to try to make the pastor mad all the time because he wants the pastor to preach with hate. He wants the pastor to preach angry because you can't hear anything the pastor says if the pastor is not preaching in love. Oh, these are the reasons for what Jesus now did, he turned and focused upon Peter. He called Peter by his full name. Simon Peter reminded him uh, that he was the son of Jonas. Uh, this did two things. First, it attracted everyone's attention, stressing that this must be important. Come on, somebody. You know when your mama called your full name? Ooh, mama calls your food name. You're going to get a whooping. Ooh, you remember. See, some of y'all millennials don't know what I'm talking about. And, and, and pastor over here going to have to take care of you every now and then. But what I'm trying to tell you, when your mama calls your full name, he said, Simon, Simon Peter, son of Jonas, he called his name. It reminded Peter where he had came from. He had come from humble beginnings, from a lowly father. All that Peter had become and would become was of God. Peter was nothing apart from Christ and nothing apart from the mission he was about to receive. He, he like, look here, don't, don't act like you all that. Yeah, I know you got. I know you own this yacht. I know. I know you got a big boat now. I know you're fishing, but come on now. You 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 went always over here. So you, some of y'all live down down downtown Newport News. You 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 you, went, you ain't always have a big house. You you went always blessed. Stop trying to act like you all that, and don't act like you did it on your own, baby. It is me who gave you the power to obtain wealth. Every good and perfect gift comes from me. I'm the one who began a good work in you, and I'm the one that's gonna finish it. It is not you yourself that is. Made you wealthy. It is by the love of God. Old school to say it like this. If it had not been for God on my side, oh Lord, where would I be? A man must know that he's nothing apart from Christ. How many persons would have more in life, more purpose, more meaning, more significance if they would only surrender to Christ? How many have actually been called by Christ and rejected their call? Therefore, they have missed out on their purpose in life and on making their contribution to society and to the world. Don't put anything before your call. Don't put it anything before what God has ordained you to do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Come on, somebody. When I first came up here, I thought I was going to have to take a pay cut. I was going to leave my house and leave my job and still come here and take a $30,000 pay cut to come here because I knew what God had called me to do. But y'all met together, and y'all said, no, we're going to make sure we get him where he needs to be. Come on, somebody. What I'm trying to tell you is you can't beat God given, and when you see Seek God first. He'll give you everything that's in his hand. Stop trying to seek your own will and love God the way he loves you. But I think I didn't came out the gate too quick. I think you, Pastor, got me a little too hyped this morning. I started off real slow. I was like Joe Osteen, and I'm ready, and I'm going to bring you a word. I was so calm this morning. I got a little hype at the middle, but in the beginning, I was real calm. I'm telling you, I surely was. And I'm trying to get back calm right now. I really am. Just hold on. Let me find my Caucasian roots. Because we all mixed down the road somewhere. Here I am. There is a difference <laughs> between the three questions Jesus asked Peter. Question one, asked Peter who he loved the most, the Lord himself or thee? 
Just what is meant by these is not clear. Jesus could have been pointing to the disciples sitting around and he could have been saying, do you love me more than your family and your friends? It, he could have been talking about the nets and, and the fishing poles and the fish and do you love me more than your career and success? I believe that the, the writer of the text wrote it vaguely so we wouldn't understand what it was so we could put whatever it is we might put before God. Do you put him before the Super Bowl? Do, do you put him before your football team? Do you put him before your wife? Do you put him before your boo? Do you put him before your job? Do you put him before your success? Do you put him before your Armani suit? Do you put him before your Gucci purse? What do you put before God? Do you love God more than the stuff he gave you? See, you know what I'm saying? This is the question he really asking. Do you love me or the gift? Do you love the gift more or do you love the gift giver more? Oh, question two. Ask Peter if he loved God, if he loved with God's love. This is seen in the Greek word for love. Jesus used one word, but Peter used another. Jesus used the word agape, the highest form of love, the love of God himself. But Peter did not reply, yea, Lord, I agape you. He said, yea, Lord, I filio you. That is, I love you like a brother. I love you with brotherly love. Filio means brotherly love, the love between two brothers. Question three, probe the genuineness and loyalty of Peter's love. Uh, here, Jesus ascends to human level of, of love, and he said he used filio. He simply asked Peter, do you love me? Do you filio me even as a brother? I'm so glad God will have an anthropomorphic uh, uh, situation and walk down to stoop down on our level to talk to us on our level. Aren't you glad that God would stoop down and make sure he can talk to you in your language? He doesn't talk to me the same way he talks to you. He don't don't talk to you the same way he talks to him he talks to you in your own language and if you can't get it when he's on this level he'll stoop down and kneel down the same way he made you he spoke the atmosphere into existence he spoke the stars into existence he spoke the world into existence it spins at 18 and a half miles every two seconds it spins with such a speed that it doesn't it, it, that, that you don't slide off but it doesn't spin you so fast that it throws you in the atmosphere he hung the sun just far enough so so we wouldn't freeze to death, but not too close that we burn up. He's a God that spoke light into existence. People want to know, is light particles and waves or particles and waves? People don't even know what it is. He spoke it into existence. And it's amazing and we don't even understand the galaxies and the stars. But when it came to you, baby, he stooped down with his hands, picked you up and molded you and breathed himself into you. He will stoop down to make sure he can talk and have a relationship with his creation that's how much he loves you he came down and they greed Peter Peter get mad because he asked him three times Peter he said you're gonna meet me at ultimate love one day I know you denied me. I believe that Jesus asked Peter three times because Peter denied him three times. He wanted to make sure that he remembered his mistake, but he wanted to make sure I'm calling you to move beyond your mistakes. Aren't you glad God calls you what he wants you to be and not what you are? Aren't you glad God calls you by your successes and not your failures? Aren't you glad God calls you by your victories and not your losses? Aren't you glad God calls you a child of God and not what you your neighbor calls you sometimes. Aren't you glad you got a God that'll give you a second, a third, and a fourth and fifth chance? I know they said we serve a God of a second chance, but I'm here to tell you, baby, if I was on my second chance, I'd be in hell right now. I'm so glad I got a God that loves me through all my weaknesses. I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to calm down. Um. Yeah, Peter, Peter would be called upon to uh, demonstrate agape love. The sacrificial love, Peter would be called upon to die for Christ, to give his life for preaching the love of God to those who do not care for it and who react violently against it. See, I want to talk to some preachers that sneak and listen to me on Periscope. I want to talk to you for a while. You got to be able to preach to those folk that don't like you, those folk that mean mug you, those folk in the choir that might not smile at you while you're preaching. You got to learn how to preach to people even when they don't love you. See, you got to learn how to preach for God and 
not the crowd. You got to learn how to preach for God and not your church. Because truth be told, baby, if I preached to you for you, I would have caught that midnight train to Georgia three, four, five years ago. Because I'm here to tell you, right, church folk ain't always nice. You got to learn how to serve God with a God they love, whether they love you or not trying to talk to somebody what Jesus was doing was preparing his disciples for a new kind of love that was yet to come up to the time of Christ's death and ascension the greatest love known to man was filial love the willingness for a man to die for his friend but in Christ, God was showing the world a new kind of love, agape love. Agape love is a love so new that a new meaning had to be given to the Greek word agape. Agape became the love that was willing to die even for your enemy. Ooh. But see, you ain't got to die like Jesus. You don't have to get on the old rugged cross. But sometimes for your enemy, you got to die to your pride. Come on, somebody. Sometimes to your enemy, you got to die to your revengeful spirit. Sometimes to your enemy, you got to love them even when they don't love you. Can I give you a black history moment? I'm so glad Dr. King taught me the difference between love and light. Uh-huh. King would get up there and they wouldn't even know he was throwing subtle shade. He'd say, I have a dream today. But he said, I'm so glad that God said I had to love my enemy, but I didn't have to like them. You ain't got to like your enemy, but you got to love them. You got to treat them right. You ain't got to hang with them. You ain't got to go to the club with them. You ain't got to go eat with them. You ain't got to watch the Super Bowl with them. But you do have to love them, but you don't have to like them. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? There's a difference between love and like. I don't have to like a thing you do, but I can still treat you with love and respect. Even when you disrespect me, it don't mean I have to disrespect you back. I love you because God first loved me. See, that's the problem with the church. See, the church want to put people out the church because they do wrong. They want to put the people out the church. Baby, come back when your skirt get long enough. But truth be told, back in the day when you didn't have all that stuff in the wrong place. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you had cranked yours up just a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just trying to talk to somebody. The problem is we want people to love us first. No. It's the songwriter, and the text says we love Christ because Christ first loved us. And the problem with the church is we don't love the city with agape love. When as soon as we get mad at somebody, we don't want to serve them anymore. You're not serving them. You're serving God. You have a higher calling. You're serving God. You ain't serving them people that cuss you out. You're serving God to make sure that his message and his kingdom principles are planted in the world today where there is no godly light. Lord, have mercy. Um, He's trying to show them a new love. The early Christian leaders recognized this new dimension of love. So they lifted the meaning of agape love to God's love for the world. Agape love is the highest love possible. It is the love of God, God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Agape love is Christ dying for people who have no strength, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the enemies of God. Peter and the disciples did not yet understand this. They could not because the Holy Spirit had not yet been given. The only way you can experience and give agape love is when you have the Holy Spirit. Let me talk to you. You know why your president don't love nobody but him and people that look like him? He has no Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Separation between church and state. Can't tell me what I can and can't say. I'm just going to keep it real. He has no Holy Spirit. See, uh, see what I'm trying to talk to you. Sister Ross is this. Before we received, before the disciples received the Holy Spirit, what he trusted the Jews with were the Jews. Because they had not experienced the Holy Spirit, they could only minister to the Jews. In fact, Peter used to get mad at Paul because Paul was going and preaching to the Gentiles. But Paul had received the Holy Spirit before Peter had. Oh, see, see, let me let me tell you something. See, look at this. Jesus said, "Go up into the upper room, and I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit to you." Once they received the Holy Spirit, then, Sister Rose, then he said, go ye and take this gospel from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the outer ends of the earth. He did not trust them to deal with anybody outside of their race until they received the Holy Ghost. See, the reason why the Baptist church is so segregated is because we only celebrate the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Sunday. 
So you have the white Baptist church, the black Baptist church. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Korean Baptist church, the Asian Baptist church, the I don't know what I am Baptist church. And, and we got all the other Baptist church and everybody in the same little segmented church because we don't have the Holy Ghost in us. When you really begin to operate in the Holy Spirit, it'll break down racism. You won't worry about racism. You won't worry about somebody keeping you down because perfect love casts out all fear. Oh, the Holy Spirit gives you the power to break down barriers and break down walls. And until you experience the Holy Spirit, you will not love your white brothers if you're black. You will not love your black brothers if you're white and so on and so on. You have to be filled and in filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows you to be able to cross racial barriers, cross ethnicities, cross different beliefs and bring people to Christ even if they don't agree with the way you're giving it to them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The Holy Ghost is power and stop agreeing. Believe in him. Let him operate and control your life. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Three times Peter was commissioned to feed and tend the flock of God. If Peter really loved the Lord, then he was commissioned to be the shepherd of the flock of God. Note three things. One scripture identifies the lambs and sheep as the flock of God. That is, as the church of God, Jesus was talking about feeding his church, his disciples within the church. Acts 20 and uh, verse 28 says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Note in verse, in verse 20, 28, the charge is to guard oneself as well as the flock of God. This is similar to what Jesus was saying to Peter, if you love me, guard yourself and be faithful. Feed my lambs and sheep, which is my church. Let me slow down a little bit. Lambs are children, young converts to handicap or special cases, believers who need special attention. Uh, pastors, if you will, your haters. Folk that mean mug you every Sunday you get up here and you wonder why they still coming. They waiting on you to leave. <laughs> You understand? You, 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 your lambs, those immature saints, and I'm not talking about chronological age, because this is a mature young folk and some immature old folk. Come on, somebody. Just because you got salt and pepper in your hair, just because your teeth ain't all in your mouth no more, does not mean <laughs> that you know Jesus more than somebody else. He said, feed my lambs. And my sheep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Paparazzi over there, you know. Sheep are mature believers. Believers who have walked and grown in the Lord for a long time. See, the ministry to the flock, to church, is twofold. See, then I want to tell you, look, it says the first ministry is to feed. In the Greek, it says bosque. All right. To give food, teaching both the milk and meat of the word. Now, we use all these different words for love, filio and, and agape. And we talked about how Jesus was asking him on three different levels. Do you love me? But this right here, this word is used in the same to feed the sheep and to feed the, 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 the lambs. It says to God and to study of the word, showing oneself approved. Second Timothy 2.15 says study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The same word is used for feeding. See, it's used for feeding both the lambs and the sheep. Both the lambs and the sheep are to be fed on the same word and fed in the same way. You must teach the mature and immature. Come on, can I talk to some teachers in the house? Come on now. Don't you hate? Come on, let's keep it real. You love teaching the smart student because you ain't got to do much. Huh? Well, you got to teach. Oh, Lord, the one that's so hard is hard. Same with preaching. You want to teach. You want to teach the folk that going to get it quick. But God is saying, look here, I need you to feed the lambs, the one that don't want to hear you, the ones that ain't paying attention, the ones that got a million questions, the ones that don't want to hear the word, the ones that don't like the word, the immature saint that always talking about you, lying on you and cussing you out. I need you to preach to the lamb the same way you preach to the sheep. Get in the same word. But that's why I'm so glad I taught special education, not because you dumb or nothing, but because it teaches you how to di differentiate your instruction. And we have to teach each individual on their own individualized education. 
education plan. See, when you're a regular teacher, sometimes you can get away with teaching to the bell curve, but with IEPs, you got to make sure you teach each person on their level. I'm so glad, God, hey, when I'm preaching, you hearing it one way, they hearing something else. Somebody else hearing something else because the Holy Spirit will give you the word the way you need to receive it. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm trying. Jesus asked Peter if he loved him, agape love or filio love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the difference between agape love and filial love is this. Filial love is love of tender affection, of warm and deep feelings within the heart. It is the deep and precious love of those near and dear to one's heart. It is brotherly love, a love between family members, a love that would die for its brother. All right? Still love. Because I got to love you to die for you. I ain't quite made it to Jesus' level yet. I'm still playing the video game, trying to get there, trying to get to that next level of agape. But agape love is a love of the mind, of the reasoning and the will. It is a love that is born of choice. Oh, see, it, it's not emotional. One simply chooses to love regardless of feelings. <sighs> y'all, y'all, y'all don't get what I'm saying. It's taking captivity your thoughts. And making you love people that don't love you. It's an intentional decision. A person may insult, injure, or humiliate, humiliate, but agape love chooses to seek only the highest good for that person. It is sacrificial love. A love that is willing to die even for his enemies. Don't you say the devil is a lie. It's Jesus now. Agape love means sacrificial giving. Free acceptance, one freely accepts without any expectation of return. Cherished attachments, unselfish devotion, personal commitment, genuine concern, strong loyalty, precious tenderness. Agape love was a new and un, and so it was so unusual, it can be said that after Christ, a new word for love had to be created. Jesus' primary interest What Peter was, of course, that he possessed agape love, the love that comes from the reason and will that controls the corruptible lust and wandering thoughts of life that puts a willingness within a man to serve and to die for all men, even for a person's enemies. Even the enemies of God must hear the gospel and have an opportunity for salvation. However, the fact, let me tell you something, you know why God, why the devil try to keep you mad at people on your job? Because he want to keep them people unsaved. And they attack you because you have the light and the demon in them don't want you to get to know them because they know if they really got to know you that they will receive Jesus Christ and be saved. Now, I ain't saying go to their office and throw oil on them and have your little Bible and stuff. But what I am saying is when they mean it, you, you still treat them with love and they're going to wonder why in the world do you still love me even though I'm treating you wrong? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The reason why the devil is trying to keep you mad at your brother and your sister, the people on your job, is because he you want to make sure you don't have the opportunity to give a witness for Christ. You going to heaven. You know Jesus. But if he can keep you separated from them, they're going to go to hell. And see, my thing is, I, I, like, I'm, I'm, I don't love money, but I don't like not having it. Can I keep it real? I like a house. I like a nice car. I like nice clothes. I like nice shoes. I don't want to wear the same shoes. But I'd rather be broke, busted, and disgusted down here for 70, 80, 90, 100 years I have a long I live, but I want a mansion in heaven. John said, look here, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it was not, I would have told you so. I'd rather live down here broke, busted, and disgusted for my 90, 80, 120 years, however long I live, than to live an eternity in a shack. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You got to learn how to stack crowns up in heaven. Yo, the, the, the moth going to eat up your soul suit. Your body going to decay. You can't take your beans and your Cadillac with you, but you can take all the crowns you stacked up in heaven with you because you led people to salvation. Every time you lead somebody to salvation, God gives you a bigger mansion in heaven. Read it in Revelation. It's right there. I don't want to be walking around here looking at how big your house is. 
stack up heavenly riches. Riches by the intangibles you do, by leading people to Christ and loving your enemies even when they do you wrong. You're stacking up treasures in heaven, those that will live forever in eternity and never wash away. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. See, even the enemies of God must hear the gospel anyway. However, the fact that Jesus also used filial love with Peter shows that God wants man to love him with his warm, instinctive feelings as well. He wants all of you. See, sister girl might lie to you. She might tell you she ain't jealous as she's looking through your phone. <laughs> She might tell you, but God tell you straight up, I'm a jealous God. And you better not put no other gods before me. You better love me with your heart, your mind, your body, your money, everything, your time, and your talent. God will tell you, I can feel his neck twisting right now. <laughs> Let me stop. I get shot down. Oh, agape. I'm going to get some points of agape. We're almost done. Number one, agape love is not only a love of emotions it is a matter of the mind as well as the heart of the will as well as the emotions john three sixteen. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life god was intentional with his love for you if god was disintentional that he allowed his son to die so that you may not perish but have everlasting life why are you worried about gas prices why are you worried about 45 why are you worrying about Republicans or Democrats? Why are you worrying about when you got laid off if you were really doing your job right? Why are you worrying about that? Why are you worrying about being demoted? Why? Because God loves you so much, he will not withhold any good and perfect gifts from you. He who began a good work in you shall finish it. He knows the thoughts that he has on you, good thoughts, thoughts of an expected end. He wants you to be blessed. He wishes above all things that you be prospered and in good health, even as your soul prospered. He wants you to be blessed. He gave his son for you. What are you fearing? When you really understand that God loves you, you unconditionally. You will be bold in everything you do. I don't care how many lies people tell on me. I don't even care when you tell the truth because God got me covered. Oh, come on. Somebody better hear what I'm saying. I don't care if you come against me. Why? Perfect love casts out all fear. If God loved me so much that he kept me out of hell by putting his own son on the cross in my stead, my God won't withhold any good and perfect gift from me. First of all, we believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. That's crazy. But God said, I use the foolishness of preaching to save souls. God says, I use foolishness to save you. I just need you to believe what I did. Don't try to figure it out all the time. Just know that he did it. And once you realize he did that for you, you won't worry about any of your enemies that come against you, even if they come at you like a flood, because you understand if God gave his son for me, he's going to handle you. Two, agape love is God's love. His very nature is the love that God extended towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8 and 10 says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Come on, somebody. Even though you messed up, God still loves you. Even when you fall and people say, and you call yourself a Christian, God still calls you a child of God. God calls you your omega, not your alpha. He calls you your ending, not your beginning. He called it your victories and not your losses. Oh, let me just read it so you can hear 1 John 4, 7 through 10 and 16. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In that is manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Amen. God is love, and if you don't love, you don't know God. 
Three, agape love is a seed that can be planted in the heart only by Christ. It is a fruit of the Spirit of God. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is the shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. We already kind of went through that because the Holy Spirit gives you the power to break down your racist thoughts. It gives you the power to love even your enemy. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Number four, agape love is the great love that God holds for his own dear son. John 15, 10 says, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in love. Basically, if you love him, love is what makes you do right. See, some people get mad because people teach grace. I don't get mad because grace is what we're under. We're not under the law, but God still has a standard. Have you ever gave somebody your name and gave somebody a recommendation and they didn't do the job right? You mad. you like, hold on, man. My name got you this job, but my name ain't going to keep you this job. You understand what I'm saying? So if God put himself on the line for you, you shouldn't just go out there and be wanting to sin in your way. Grace and the love that he gave you should make you want to try to live the best life you can because you know it was a precious gift that he was beaten for your transgressions. Agape love was perfectly expressed when God gave up his own son to die for man. It says, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, for the love of God constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then uh, we're all dead. Basically, when he died, he, see, he became sin for us. He became the very thing God couldn't look at. Has somebody ever called you out of your name? Especially if it ain't good. You don't like that, do you? But God calls us righteous, but we're not righteous. He calls us righteous. Even though we're not, he calls you something you're not because once you claim and, and, uh, and that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and he died for the remission of your sins, no longer does God look at your sin for nature. He sees the precious blood of Jesus and he calls you righteous. Remember when Jesus became sin on the cross, God turned his back on him and he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? And because he had become sin and God does not look at sin, the only reason God can stomach and look at me is because I'm a believer and I'm covered by the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Number six, agape love is the love which holds believers together. For three years, Jesus himself had held the apostles together. Now he, now that he was about to leave them, that what was going to keep them together and keep them at the task. One thing, the new commandment, agape love, agape love is the love believers are to have for one another. Look at this. It says in John 13, 33 through 35, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you a new commandment I give you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. That's why I understand why church folk even mean the church folk. At least be nice to the church folk. The reason why we can't love the people in the world, we don't love the people we sit next to in church. He said, at least love it. You the same body. Now, look, I don't care how mad my hand make me. I ain't going to cut it off. I don't care how many times I miss a shot playing basketball. I don't care how many times I strike out. I ain't going to just cut my wrist off. You feel me? Because what? It's my body. We are all one body. God is the head and we are all believers. Some of us are cutting off our hand, our foot, our neck, our shoulders when we begin to down our Christian brothers and sisters and begin to put all their business on Facebook. You need to pray for them and not bring out their mess. You need to stop putting their stuff out in the world. Your job is to cover them and make sure that they're able to be restored back into the right standing with God, not to put their business out there. Seven. Agape love is a love which believers are to have for all men. It says in 1 Corinthians 16, 14, let us let all your things be done with charity or love. Love everybody. It says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. First Thessalonians 3, 12. Basically, he's saying me and God love you like this. I need you to love everybody the way I love you. 
Agape love seeks the welfare of all. Romans 15, 2 says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Look, agape love works no ill to its neighbor. It says in Romans uh, uh, 13, it says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Love him. Don't covet. See, he said, if you love your neighbor, you won't covet what he has. You, you will follow the commandments. Look, I'm just read this for y'all. I got to got to got to hear this. You got to hear this. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. See, he's saying you fulfill the law if you just love. Look at this. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. If you love your neighbor, you will leave his wife alone. Some of y'all put your head down. <laughs> At least they just didn't say amen at eight. Them jokers say. Mm. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Most of the time when you sin, it hurts somebody. It hurts more than you. It may hurt your child, your wife, your husband, your coworker, your boss, your subordinates, your employees, your pastor, your deacons. It's going to hurt somebody when you sin. When you love your neighbor as yourself, it really helps you fulfill the commandments. That's why it's hard. I'm going to just leave that for another sermon. Agape love <laughs> seeks opportunities to do good to all men, especially to those in the household of faith. Galatians 16 says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Be good to everybody, especially your Christian brother and sister. Amen. Why you mean to people at your own church? I'm going to leave that alone. Y'all think about it. Marinate them. Number eight, agape love is proven by obedience to Christ. Doing as one self wishes instead of doing as God wills shows that one does not have agape love. John 14, we almost through 15, 21 to 23 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He that have my commandments and keep of them, he is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by the father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. Basically, he said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Let me read these verses, and I'm almost done. i got about 10 more minutes. John 21, 18 through 22 says, Verily, verily, same chapter, different verses. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he's talking to Peter, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whether ever thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by the death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Then Peter turned about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on the breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter seeing him, him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said, he's talking about John. Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it? Of you, what you worrying about? Follow me. Basically, look here. Stop worrying about everybody else, Peter. Don't worry about what Judas did. Don't worry about what John doing. I need you to focus on what it is I have purpose in you. See, look at this. Let me take you this right quick. If we stayed in our lane, we wouldn't fussing too much. Fussing all the time. You know why I don't fuss with too many people? I got too much stuff to do. I can't even hardly have a social life. Why? Because I got to do what the purpose has called me to do. I don't have time to get in cat fights and dog fights with you. I got a devil to fight and a purpose to fulfill. When you really get focused on what God has for you, you don't have time to be paying attention and see what Timmy doing and seeing what Deacon Spell's doing and worrying about what, what Reb is doing. If you really get focused on the call that God has ordained you to fulfill you won't worry about everybody else's life Jesus said look here shut up Peter don't worry about John follow me focus on me stop focusing on everybody else stop looking at first Baptist Denver that ain't your church stop worrying about what Gethsemane doing stop worrying about what your neighbor doing do your job some of y'all getting let go of a job every three months because you won't do your own job looking at what everybody else doing 
Then he says, you're going to get taken where you don't want to go. And some theologians, when I looked it up in the text, I began to execute the text, Brother Ross. Some theologians said that they were talk, he might have been talking about when, Jesus, when he was going to be carried away and put on the cross. Jesus ain't worried about that. I ain't talking about his cross when Peter had to go get crucified. Um, that's what some theologians say that that's what they were talking about, Deacon Allen. But Jesus ain't talking about that. Jesus is talking about now that you are maturing in me, the Holy Spirit is going to take you to places you don't even want to go. You're going to preach and be beaten. You're going to preach and they're going to send anonymous letters to you and about you. <laughs> You're going to do what I want you to do. See, at first, Peter, you dressed yourself. You put on the clothes you wanted to wear. But when you call by me, I'm going to dress you. And believe me, it's not, that, it's not that shallow with the clothes. But what he's saying is, I'm the one that's going to tell you where you're going to go and you're going to listen. And you're going to wonder why you got on that train to go to Newport News and even know where you was going. You're going to wonder why you left Atlanta. You're going to wonder why you left the shipyard and did whatever it is you were supposed to be doing. You're going to wonder why because the Holy Ghost is going to lead you. When you really love God with agape love, you understand that your life is not your life. And you were bought with a price. And whatever God wants you to do, you will do it. You will do whatever, wherever you want me to go. When he say move, you will move. When he say sit down, you will sit down. Why? Because the Holy Ghost will take over your life. You were bought with a price. Your life is not your life. Your life belongs to Jesus. You were bought with a price. When you agape love and understand that God agape loves you, you will begin to do what it is he wants you to do. This is the thing I preached a sermon yesterday at this funeral, and John asked Jesus a question because he had begun to slip out of the agape love. And he said, Jesus, he sent a message, Jesus, uh, are you the one or should we find another? And Jesus didn't even dignify it with an answer. He just kept doing miracles and then said, go back and tell John what you saw. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? I know you mad because of some situations you're in. And so you're mad because maybe you got laid off on your job. Maybe your child in trouble. But even when you send a message to Jesus to ask him, why is it you going through? If you look over your left and right shoulder, I'm sure you got a testimony in your life. I'm sure there's a situation that you thought you weren't going to make it out of last year. But if you made it out of 2017 and made it into 2018, you will make it through this right now. I know you feel some doubt right now. But if you could just agape love your God. Even if he makes your bed in hell, he'll be right there with you. You got to be like Job. Yay, don't he save me. Oh, will I trust him. Will you understand that God agape loves you and he will not withhold any good and perfect gift from you? Will you understand that God who began a good work in you shall finish it? Will you understand that God is the author and finisher of your faith? Will you understand that God wants you to be blessed? He loves you and unconditional. Will you understand that Jesus died for you? You won't worry about the foxhole you in. You won't worry about the enemy that's coming against you. Why? Because your agape love will let you know everything's going to be all right. All things happen for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. When I get the job, it's for my good. When the door is closed, it's for my good. When I get promoted, it's for my good. But even when I don't, it's still for my good. God will close doors I don't need to walk through. He'll open doors that I do need to walk through. My God is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He began the work. He will finish it. I don't worry about haters. I don't worry about naysayers. Why? Because my God agape loves me. He loves me when I do right. He loves me when I do wrong. He loves me when I'm successful. He loves me when I fail. He loves me when I pay my tithes. He loves me when I don't. He loves me when I get the job done. He loves me when I don't. He loves me. He died for me. Hey! If he wouldn't know you, he still would have died for me. And when you understand that God loves you unconditionally, 
You won't let nobody judge you. You won't fuss with them. You won't try to prove your case. People used to tell me why you don't address stuff when people talk about you. Because I don't care. Whatever their opinion is, don't change who I am. So why I'm going to waste time dealing with them when God agape loves me. See, some of y'all wonder how I'm a pastor because God agape loved me. He know I'm crazy. He know I'm messed up. He know he see the same stuff you see and more. Yet he still used me because he agape loved me. And once you understand he agape love you too, you will stop hating on my life and everybody else's. You will understand that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what my God has in store for me. I don't care if you got blessed. If you get blessed, I start shouting because you got blessed on my street. So my blessing must be coming. He agape loves you, but he agape loves me too. If you get blessed, I ain't going to hate. I'm going to shout. I'm going to scream in the Holy Ghost because I know if you got blessed, my blessing is on the way. Hey, I shout for you. I praise for you. Why? Because you got me loves. And I shown them shout. When my enemy gets blessed, I know if you bless my enemy, God, I know you got to bless me today. Hey, I ain't hating on nobody. God is rich and he shall supply all, not some, not a lot, not the most of it, but he shall supply all of my needs according to to his riches in glory. (sighs) Agape love. He he agape love you. He agape loves you. He loves you more than feeling your love. I know your mama loves you, but she your mama. <laughs> but he loves you even more than her. He loves even your enemies. He, he loves you unconditionally. He loves you. He loves you. 